We're good. Okay. Ah, the tight screw. Hey, we are in the middle of a reverse shoulder replacement on a uh, on a guy who I just recalled played Major League Baseball about 30 years ago. All right. So he uh, had a dislocation at work and. Well, this is what's left at the head of his humerus because the back part, he collapsed. So I took part of it to reconstruct the, the glenoid, which is the cup of the shoulder. And um, my, my colleagues who might be listening in would understand, so I had to do an anterior glenoid reconstruction with bone graft. So that's why we didn't start earlier because that just was a bit tricky. But now the base plate is in. So the base plate is the part that will support the glenosphere, the head, that's gonna actually go on the cup. So the reverse shoulder is reversed because the head goes on the cup. All right, so who's on first? Third base, right? So baseball analogy. So we're doing the opposite of what you would think because he also had not a great rotator cuff, but turns out he had a better cuff than we thought. But I think a reverse shoulder would be better for him anyway because of the, the significant damage he had. He's also a bit older. So here we are. So the glenoid, um, so we're ready for our glenoid. So we, we agreed on a, on a smaller. Yeah. Okay. So a little bit hard to see in here, but. So this, this is the, the humerus. We've already removed the head. And now this is the, the glenoid, which is the cup of the shoulder. And uh, it's actually the most challenging the most part of these surgeries. So. Why don't you take that out in the meantime? So, as usual, we, uh, we take questions. Pretty rare you can actually ask questions during surgery, but. Did we put on clean gloves while we got it? We went to the doctor, you always wore clean underwear, and now we wear... <laughs> right. Remember that? Those days? Now the kids will come to my office and don't even look up from their phones. <laughs> okay. So, so this is the glenosphere. This is going to go on the base plate that I just screwed in to the glenoid. And, um, and then this, this, this stem will go underneath and his arm will move like that. This will be stable on the shoulder blade, the scapula, which, and the glenoid is part of that. Okay. All right. Are set screws in? Correct. Incision I tend to use. I I'm a little crazy, but I just like. Or, you know, this guy might go to South Beach or something if you want it to be prettier. Thank you. There you go. Okay. All right. 
Okay, you can relax strongly. I know that it's still in your apologize. You can do it loose. Some more last on the dear hand to shoulder. And that would be a good time maybe for Chris to explain kind of, can you explain a little bit of biomechanics of the, about, about the reverse shoulder? About the shoulder? Yeah, yeah so the reverse shoulder, shoulder is basically going to work off the deltoid. So it uses the deltoid as a lever arm instead of some of the rotator cuff muscles that may or may not be compromised at this point. Like Dr. Badia said before, our patient has pretty good intact rotator cuff muscles. So we ended up going with a slightly smaller, less lateralized glenosphere, so to not overstuff the joint at this point. Yep. So I'll go ahead and show you guys our trays here. I'm not gonna show you the trays. So this is gonna be our right medical ascent flex. It's actually a short stem prosthesis. Give her Show her a little bit of the, uh, the compactors here. These are our compactors. What they do is actually compact bone as opposed to a brooch, which removes the bone. So here we're actually continuing to build on the bone stock that we have distally. Our trays here, which are these circular items here, these are actually going to be an onlaid tray that we have instead of an inlaid system. Like I said before, our system is looking to preserve bone, so we have an onlaid convertible stem as opposed to an inlaid stem. So we're not removing any metabolic bone. So. 
then we'll move forward. We're going to start the humeral aspect of our surgery now. Check the normal bone. Yeah. These, it's it's a little tight. Yeah. Okay. That's how the oscillating. Well, what you could do, Dr. Biddy, is that you could bury the stem a little bit with a little downsize, one stem size down, and then we could cow part. Yeah, but still, it's, I'm going to be fighting against myself. Okay. Right now. No problem. Let's have a uh, hole in here. Even, even this 
fragment still that has cut on it. Someone asked, what part of the body are you operating on specifically? All right. Well, we are going to go back to basics. This is a shoulder. The right shoulder. This is the right shoulder. Thank you, Kate. So this is his face right here by my thumb. It's his head. So where's the right shoulder? So basically, this is a gentleman who had a work injury and dislocated his shoulder. It came out. In Spanish. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, so it all. <laughs> okay. Este el hombro derecho y aquí estamos en el húmero. Entonces lo que estamos haciendo es preparando el componente para entrar dentro del húmero. And you'll notice that his arm is almost a little bit backwards. Not backwards, but just rotated a little more than normal so that we can have access to the joint part of the joint that we need to replace. We might have to stop operating the pain. Wait. Oh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Okay. All right, Chris, yep. number one. I am here. Still having 20 degrees retroversion. I believe that's in 30 right now, or 20. 20, 20. Yep. Go ahead and give him the light mallet as well. Go ahead and give him the next one. Green. Okay, keep going. Okay. Okay, there you go. No, no, we're gonna stop there probably because we're waiting for that pitch change. I'm going to tell you about the time I uh, got uh, you know, <laughs> Señora que preguntó el número del hombro derecho se dislocó contra la copa y entonces lo que pasa es que estaba el crítico y doloroso el señor tenía mucho dolor y no podía mover el brazo entonces en ese momento hay que reemplazar la cabeza del hombro porque ya está dañado vamos a poner una prótesis un hombro nuevo artificial básicamente lo mismo que una cadera una rodilla pero en el hombro Chris, 
how far in? So there should be two laser marks there that should say five six. You see them on the front? Yeah. Okay. So just just sync that to about the just above the cut surface. That should be good. Yeah. And then go ahead and leave it in there, and then we'll we'll use the punch. We have Vivian Barbosa who said, this is amazing, especially with Queen in the background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's not Freddie Mercury's voice, but I did have his mustache. Anybody who went to medical school or they, uh, and residency, hey, he was in style back then. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, I gotta sink a little bit more because this is not sitting. Okay, if not, you can also use a ronger to take a little piece if you'd like. Oh yeah? And it disappeared and I don't know why. <laughs> the prototype. And now somebody's manufacturing know. it somewhere oh, else no, in the world, right? Somebody already, you know. Of course. You know, <laughs> it's, 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 it's what happens when you're, you're too busy. Okay. Someone in Spanish asked, what's the name of the surgery you're doing? Esto es una troplastia o reemplazamiento del hombro invertida. El hombro está invertido. Okay. Um, puedo... Eh, si van a mi página web, creo que hay un poco más de información sobre esto, un dibujo esto. Y también puedo, podemos enviar eso después. Boston going on now? Mm -hmm. If this was an arthroscopy, everybody knows we'd be playing Julio Iglesias, the viejo. I was missing that today. I thought we were going to hear that. No, no, not in the shoulder. No? 
No, we, we have enough of that in the sugar so. <laughs> Last time I heard that, I think we were doing like a radio head or something. No, no. It would have to have been the uh, shoulder scope. Yeah. yeah. So Only allowed. They won't let me play. Who <laughs> knows? <laughs> okay. Go ahead and check up number three there. And we're just waiting for that pitch change. No, man. It's... Do you three finger uh, tap there? One more. Tight, man. That's my only concern. Yeah. It's tight. Okay. We can cap our plane down a little bit just to relieve some of the tightness. Okay. Go ahead and pull this, pull this uh, green one here for right now. And go ahead and put that on a quick connect for me. There it is. Oh. Okay. Disconnect. Okay. Yep, just disconnect it. I'm just going to handle here. Yeah. Yep. I don't think I need to. I don't think I need to play, Mike. I mean, it's flat. Well, let's just play it just to make sure that the tray sits flush. <laughs> oh, he said to explain. Okay, his job is to be a pain in my. Can I stay down on the internet? Orthopedic surgeons are like little boys and girls who like to play with toys. Is that on ring, Doc? Is that on ring? Okay. Now it is. There it is. Um. This is in room against Go here and try the so, the low offset first. Yeah. And then just see we'll, where, where you dial it, wherever it ends up, we'll, we'll go ahead and seat it there, okay? Okay, so this white screwdriver right here that you have behind you. We're going to hand that to him next, okay? Okay. And then whenever you're happy with the coverage, go ahead and tighten that down. The white screwdriver will tighten that down for you. Go ahead and pull this yellow column here, the first one to your left. Okay, this comes up. Perfect. Yep, we're done with that. There's your poly, Dr. B. Oh boy. <laughs> Do we do weedies today? It's gonna be tough. Everybody would do it. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's get some irrigation here, please. First. You notice how I worked everybody up to this with doing scopes for a while? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, bam, I hit them with the open surgery. <laughs> So part of the size that we knew is already there, and then we're making sure that we have the appropriate size for the patients. Everyone loves your choice of music. <laughs> but you know, each type has its. If this was like tendon repairs, it would be jazz, microsurgery is classical. 
<laughs> I spent all night at Baptist under the microscope listening to like Bach and Mozart. Okay. Okay, you do it because I want to, this one's going to be a little tight, so you, you, you have to. So by the way, this is a robotic arm that helps me that eventually will eliminate cake, okay? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> if only I don't know. Okay, okay. Oh, can you imagine? Without you, it was fewer persons. Yeah, it was yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, it was just tight enough. Wow. I'm going to sit on the next one for that. <laughs> <laughs> See how you do with your robot. <laughs> so, okay, so there's a slap hammer right there. On top. That, right there. that one, yep. <laughs> so, you can, once he re so give him that blue right, bar. Can I, uh, I should try the motion now. Yep. Let's give me know it's our, our favorite step. So now we're, we're disconnecting the control for the robotic arm. Actually, I'm waiting for robots to replace me. And I, and I can actually, actually use my boat. Okay. So next on the rotation. I mean, he's got a great subscap, so I mean, this guy's gonna. Now here's the kicker. I mean, this guy hasn't moved his arm in like a month, so it's gonna be tight. All right. What do you think, Chris? Good. Don't be hairbrushing me. A little more, a little more hard flexion, but I think that given the scenario, I mean. Okay. Yeah, you can just look at the dislocators right here. Beard down to here, but I have it stuffed <laughs> into my hat. <laughs> and all the girls in your have great legs, right? Can <laughs> I get a couple for that nowadays? Is that? Uh, that would be tough. Uh, I don't compliments anymore. Chivalry is Alright, so go ahead and pull back on that. Somebody else will. Yeah. So pull that back in, okay. yeah, and he'll screw that into the. Um, okay, let's have a. Let him just. I need a. Um, now I need an army navy juice. Where did that come from, Dave? Keep it in my oh. seat, <laughs> Look at the substack. It's unbelievable. I've never had a substack in a, in, a, in a reverse shoulder like this. Okay. So now, the shoulder, uh, later on we'll show you what it looks like reduced, but... Okay, so you, you're going to do this? Mm -hmm. Ready? Yep. Yeah. That's it. Yes. Okay, I'll do this one there. Okay, that slap hammer will go screw into there. Do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can wear my clogs again. I don't have to worry about my nice sneakers. Oh, was it because of your knee? You were wearing your sneakers? Yeah, just because of my knee, which I had surgery here with Dr. Mauricio Herrera. The best knee surgery in the world. Yeah, that was a long road, but necessary. I still have recurring dreams that I'm running on a Venetian causeway. Can I tell you about Like, not running, like sprinting. Like, I swear to God. Our little set screw. Here's stuff. Um, what was he gonna do? Mm -hmm. 
Can I take the whole? Yeah, yeah, just pull yeah. back on that handle and screw it right into the right inside the poly. The other day, and got caught at the bridge for the tiniest boat that it did not need to open the door. <laughs> oh, and they're out of control with that lately. Oh, it's ridiculous. They but are. there was runners who were also they're standing around. Oh, <laughs> you get these in, these type A triathletes. I know they're my patients. <laughs> and they would not appreciate that. Okay, I need, I need better. You know, like, like the muscle. So just unscrew it from the tray and then just lock it off a little bit. So does everybody want to see the hole made in the humerus ready for the prosthesis? Can we show her that? Yeah, um, can you, Greg, can you move that table back so that she can come in for a moment? back anyway, okay. So in here, here are my fingers in the hole in the humerus that I created. And that's what the prosthesis is. Underneath the skid is the, the glenosphere, which is like the shiny head which goes on the scapula. Okay. Ready? Yep. Go ahead and just remember you just pick two points there. Just pick two numbers and we'll take a marker. Right, marker, yeah. Um, I can remember. I'm gonna five on. There's a mark from uh, probably the one I did last time. Okay. Okay. If five will go there. I'm okay. fine. Perfect. Okay. No, don't worry. Thank you. So, so a horse walks into a bar. The bartender says, "Why the long face?" I I never get his jokes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the world's <laughs> shortest joke. <laughs> Listen, if I told long jokes, you'd be like, why are we still in this surgery? <laughs> Any of you yank out? Okay. We are We are who? Past the Oh, I can't say anything good because Kate gets upset. She's superstitious. I say that everything. She thinks I'm superstitious, but in every single shoulder stone, we have to listen to the same two Julio CDs. Oh. <laughs> it's just that it makes a difference. All right, this is really pretty. This is like. Now you know why these things are so expensive. Look at the packaging. It's just like going to Prada. You get shoes at Prada, they, they've got to put it in this beautiful box in the bag because you're paying like. Yeah, right? The Lamborghini of shoulders. I'm going to show you that I did memorize this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, no, no, come on. Aha, uh -huh. who's your impact if you're waiting back here? Right here. Okay, so now. You want to do that on the back table instead of the mail? Yeah. <laughs> Collapse the mail. All right. Now, Right it's called the so Morse taper, and whoever invented that is a very... So this is the final prosthesis. This is the so this is new joint the that he's yeah. preparing right now on the back cancel. table. Again, with the retro rod, okay? so, so there's two components. One component is already in the shoulder, and yeah. he's preparing yeah. the other half. All right, just checking on your 20 degrees. Eh? No, I bet, I bet. <laughs> because it just doesn't. 
Does it, does it make a difference? I think it made a, you know what it is? It's this. It's, yeah, that's why it says up. Oh, yeah, tell me that. There you go. I didn't realize that the horse was slightly different. I always forget that. All right. So, thanks, Dave. All right, so this is the definitive prosthesis. Okay, so it's got what they call a plasma coat. The, the bone will ingrow. We're not using bone cement. Okay, so that means this. Hey, he'll take a Like now and then. Okay. Wash that off. No, I'm gonna go with the final. Final? Because I can't go, I'm not definitely not gonna go smaller. Okay, you have that impact with everything? Yes, right here, right here. Yep, take that impactor. We're gonna switch to this one here. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the one that says 36. And I'm gonna open up this final. Well now we're putting the poly this is metal, that's metal. And then we're gonna put a polyethylene, which is a, a plastic, basically, so it's a nice friction-free surface. And this also has fancy packing. This was more like, uh, kind of like Yves Saint Laurent. <laughs> You can see this is a friction-free surface, and that's going to go up against the glenosphere. And let me wipe it because I like it to look pretty. pretty. Bonito, bonito. Okay, we're ready. So okay. It's not metal on metal. Excellent. Here we go. Oh, it um, no. You know. You know what? Um, hold it. Oh, do you hold the uh, subscap? Okay. 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 
kids already. Oh, you're on the back? Oh, okay. <laughs> you're good. Okay, good. Can you come uh, a little bit lateral? Towards this way? Come back and then... Um, and then come, uh, come a little bit lower now, like... I don't even know how to... What's that? Like... A little more... More than that? Ball and socket, but in this case, we turned it into a ball. Oh, now I get what you were saying. <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah. Pretty good Attaching the only part of the that we really detached and rotated from is the small muscle on the front called the subscapularis. Thank you. 
No, no, it's not. Fidel Castro, of course. They, they literally had to hold me back. I wanted to rush the stage. <laughs> Thank you. 
good time for questions. How much do you get paid? Um, whatever the insurance company decides. So, don't get me started. <laughs> No, I'll tell you, it's an interesting thing to bring up because what's different about the surgery that the people watching will realize is that 99% of the times the surgery is done in a hospital, um, oh, more queen, you want me to stop talking you guys want to listen? <laughs> take on the U.S. healthcare system. Anyway, this surgery would be extremely expensive if done in one of the local hospitals. It's just not, it's, it's, and I'm not talking about like twice as much, I'm talking like, like five times, maybe more. Not to mention he's going home, what do you want to do? You be in a hospital room being woken up every six hours and you draw blood? I don't know what I do. I mean, yeah, he'll have some pain, but we, we, uh, Shane, you put in Expirel, right? Yes, sir. Uh, can you tell them what Expirel is? That it's like... Expirel is a long-acting uh, local anesthetic. Uh, it's basically the uh, anesthetic bupivacaine. It's been around for 30, 40 years. Someone came up with the bright idea of uh, surrounding it with fat globules. So that makes it last for over three days. So it's a great drug to uh, minimize narcotic use. And I can attest to it because I had my knee reconstruction there and I, I literally never had pain after probably the biggest knee surgery to have. And, uh, and, and our patients that were doing, were doing probably a total shoulder every other week. And uh, I mean, there are some people who literally have said, oh, I, I got no pain. And I find that kind of incredulous, but that's what they're telling me. One more, uh, one more, go back So, infection rate, right? When I went to the hospital all the time, remember what's being done in the room next to you? Infection of a colon. Some big UIN procedure. So all these bacteria are in the environment. I mean, here, what we do is mostly listen to who they dresses and do <laughs> surgery to little holes. So, when we do something like this, and we're doing knee replacements now, so, I'll give a shameless plug for the Doral Orthopedic Center. If you go to doraldoc.com, doraldoc.com, um, you can see the different orthopedic centers are all in one building here in the house. So it's not just a surgery center, of course, because most people don't need surgery, thank goodness. Uh, but people, people walk in here with back pain and go to where we're going now, and then they, they, if they have a foot problem, they may end up getting referred to, say, Dr. Devin, Dr. Bond. Um, and then there's rehab here, and then there's imaging, meaning that when you walk in here, you have um, access to an MRI that's right here rather than get sent somewhere. And so all these all these things are incredible cost savings. Um, I mean certainly for a patient, but for the insurance company doing for it, society as a whole.
algunas preguntas de mis, de mis amigos latinos. Y yo falo portuñol. They said your Spanish is good, by the way. It's good, well. Yeah. <laughs> Moving to, moving to Miami helps. So it's not a bad start, guys, right? We haven't actually even finished it. Nah. Oh, thank you. Claudia said, yeah, this is a skin stapler. So what this does is reverse the edges. That's how wounds heal. So. And maybe we're, we're suturing up a lot of wounds that right now school starts, so we're going to start getting all kinds of in the restaurants even start to uh, suture all kinds of wounds. surgery we do tonight. We're not, we don't, we're not doing any spinal fusion, right? Okay, that's Dr. Hyde. So, so John Hyde does artificial disc replacements, lumbar fusions. I mean, it's amazing. And the patients go home. All right? Pretty amazing. Same day. Same day. Actually, now we have 23-hour admission to Florida. Thank you, politicians, legislators. They finally passed 23-hour admission rule, which means that if the patient, Dr. Zunani and his team thought... We should uh, be observed overnight. We can do that, but we're not going to need more. All right, so, so, you know, this is, um, this is what we're going to be seeing increasingly in healthcare. I mean, you have to worry about cost, but in the end, it's, it's, it's better for the patient. Right. Replace your shoulder. You want to be home? I want to be home. <laughs> you don't want me to replace your phone. No. <laughs> what if you had? If I had to have one, though, I'd like to go home afterwards. So, all right, I'm going to...